would be in the care facility when they were staying with us and we'd be leaving and dad would give her a kiss goodbye they'd kiss each other and mom would say the same thing every day and she'd say I'm the luckiest girl in the world sitting in his chair reading, yeah. <laughs> with his glasses on, his reading glasses on, reading either that or with a pencil in his hand doing a crossword puzzle, you know, sitting in his chair. I think of him in his little, in the blue chair with the black light shining under a crossword yeah, yeah, yeah. puzzle. I think of Grandpa standing right at the windows of the A-frame with his pipe looking out on the lake. I always think of a, uh, a catamaran going out, mm. you know, going sailing with them. We would go sailing all the time. Dad and I would go sailing after he uh, got home from uh, work many a summer. And for Dad, for me, the stability, you know, just that, that rock that I knew never had to worry about it. My father, I know, showed us his love by caring for us in being a provider. I really think that the, he saw that as his main role uh, because of the effort that he put into that. Mom always told us that she loved us and Dad did too. And Mom telling us often how much Dad loved us and that he worked hard for us. Grandpa is the most contemplative person that I think I've ever met, really. I know my father being in business for himself, um, highly valued integrity and reputation, too. He was very well read. He was a great piano player. He had a, he had a, a, a certain style of play that was just wonderful for that type of music, that pop. Yeah. He was a charmer. He could be super charming. It's kind of a strange conflict because he had such a charming public persona, mm -hmm. but he didn't often. But he, I think, if he, his preference would be to not have to ever use that persona. Grandpa was great at telling stories. Mm -hmm. He was a great storyteller. Funny, wonderful wit. He is a great storyteller. Yeah, and. Uh, and had a wonderful sense of humor and quick. I mean, even in his 80s, when we would be talking to him, you know, he'd come up with these remarks that was like, wow, you still got it, Dad. You know, it's still right there. Very sharp. He worked really hard to take care of his family. And Grandpa and was confident. Him. They're both very confident. Very confident people. Charming. Really, very charming people. He's a man of moderation, for sure. Yes. He's able to moderate pretty much everything that he did. He might be the only male that ever got a vacuum cleaner as a gift for, for his brother. <laughs> I remember him, he used to go around and he would pick little things up. He'd be picking things up off the floor in the kitchen with the sponge. Grandpa loved to clean and I do the same thing now so I can't I really too. say I pick things up compulsively. Thanks Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one piece of advice that they both gave me, you know, independently was never get into show business. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crummy life. <laughs> oh, to turn down the music for sure. Study hard. <laughs> Those are his two refrains. Study hard, brother, you you get the, brother you, Tom. You get, you get, the, get the, the fast back rub. Take any wooden nickels. Keep Study your, hard. Keep your nose clean. That's right. Keep your nose clean. Study hard. Yep, yep, every time. Every time. <laughs> Before we left. Father, I would say, again, smart, uh, business-minded, logical, practical, trustworthy, loyal, 
um, dependable. I remember a lot about Grandpa, like, um, you know, chasing us around the living room and calling us little schnickel fritz and tickling us and stuff, and then coming out and, like, demanding to know who clogged the john. <laughs> I'd go in, and I'd wake him up, and he'd pull me onto him, and he'd put me on his knees, and he'd, like, jump me on his knees, and then the last time he'd drop him, and he'd drop down on the knees, and we'd play like that. That was really nice. You know, the kind of you know the chasing around the living room and, and the thing where you know you, you put your hands between your legs mm -hmm. and you know he, he grabs him and, and like pulls him up like that and you, you flip in the hair. It's a good game. Boy, I would do that like many, many I times to do it with with my own children now. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, I, I miss him uh, every time I come up from the beach. Uh, you know, off of the uh, you know and approach the seawall. You know, I, I could always kind of look up there and, and see Grandpa mm -hmm. sitting up there, and you know, I still kind of unconsciously look up there to see. Right. It, you know, I guess you know to see if he's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yep. Don't even notice that I'm doing it, but uh, yeah, I miss him. I love him. <laughs> You know, one day dad just turned to me and said, you know, I was just thinking about mom when she was young and I forgot how beautiful she was. Elegant. Grandma sophisticated. Very elegant, sophisticated. Yeah. Well read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well spoken. Well educated. Yeah. You know, grandma had a very, as pictures see, had a very distinctive and flamboyant um, fashion <laughs> sense. <laughs> She had an eye for color and design and balance, and um, uh, was always looking for something a little different, like off-center and the unusual. I remember coming into um, Sun City and this wonderfully dressed woman approached. And she was dressed with such style, and her face lit up like a Christmas tree. And she held out her arms, and she said, I am so happy that you are here, and come into the kitchen, let's get started and make dinner. And I knew her in the later years of her life, when things weren't so easy. And she had taken all of this time and care, and it, it was this elaborate dinner. The table was beautifully set with china, and she kept on saying again and again to me, you are welcome, you are accepted, and I just got to know you, but there is love here. She was always there to comfort us when we needed it and to uh, encourage us around the house. It was important to her to have a place where she could welcome people and make them feel comfortable and she was good at that. She was just very attentive to things like draperies and um, fashion and um, she was just very classy that way. But like the last day before somebody was leaving to go home uh, from Van Buren and she'd wake up early and make this big breakfast for like 18 things she eat. Moors and caramellos. That's what I remember when I'd watch TV on her bed. Underneath the bed would be a carton of Moors and like a big, like one of the big containers of the caramellos. I don't know. Yeah. Waking up, uh, <laughs> Michael and I sitting together in the, the chair from the television watching cartoons. Yeah. Knowing that any minute Grandma was going to wake up in her, she'd come out in her house coat and she'd already have a cigarette lit, <laughs> yeah. you know, not hanging holding it. Out. And then the cigarette would be hanging out, but I never got ashes in my cereal. cereal. I don't know how. I don't know how. Yeah. And then the ashtrays, I remember when they would come from. Um, when they drive from Arizona and they had the station wagon. I just remember them in the car. The they little like ashtrays in the sand and the bottom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> making things in the kitchen, um, making uh, pie <laughs> and soup. <laughs> <laughs> uh,
don't think I've ever met anybody that just had that, that sense of, of perpetual motion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all these little things that she was doing all the time. But um, with but the she, TV on. In with the, the TV on. Oh yeah, and like smoking and cooking, yeah, cooking something, chopping up something at the same time. Right. Um, and having a beer there and <laughs> yeah. everything. She knew what she wanted. She definitely knew what she wanted and was absolutely willing to, to um, demand whatever it was that she um, that she wanted. But she was very, very strong-willed. Yes, I have enjoyed it so far, just to the tenth degree. She got me interested in cooking at an early age. And that's, that's really where I got it from, my interest in, in fine foods. I remember Grandma teaching me how to knit. I mean, she loved parties, and it felt like she had a way of making it feel like a party to me. She really taught us to love life, you know, and she loved it. Maybe you could. In honor of her, if you'll join me in three hip hip hoorays. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip!